Sabbath greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our High Priest and our Common King. To our brothers and sisters in the house and those who are tuning online, welcome to our Sabbath study. We have been running to and fro in the book of Hebrews and we have been blessed thus far. I am Paul, those who don't know me, and to my left, And we will be looking at Lesson 8, Jesus, the Mediator of the New Covenant. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another Sabbath day ahead where we can come into your courts with praise and thanksgiving as we are about to open your word, Holy Spirit, open your mind, and we pray that that which you reveal to us, our heart may be receptive, so we may be transformed and your name may be glorified. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Next, please carry with us the words and the words of Louis. Um, a mediator is, sorry, a mediator is um, one who comes between. A, a, yeah? Would that be that? Would you agree? Yeah? Is one who speaks on behalf also of somebody else is somebody who has been appointed to speak on behalf. Okay, thank you. First Timothy 2 verse 5 tells us, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So we're looking at the mediator of the new covenant who is Christ himself. Now, the Old Covenant, we know that the, um, the Levi officiate under the Old Covenant. This is a shadow that was pointing to the original. So, whether we say new, renewed, original, but Christ is the only mediator between God and man. And this is why the covenant is known as the New Covenant. But before Christ came to... Um, before Christ begins to mediate on our behalf, he had to come in flesh so he could pay the ransom, the price for us. And so he had to, wear, he had to bear the cross before he bear the crown. And the, the process in which our salvation has been, his changed life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension and his mediation. And we're looking at his mediation today. So, <coughs> we know that God is a covenant-keeping God, right? Yes, may I just say? Um, yes. Jesus is the only mediator. Um, we know that in the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 3, God had already um, pointed out to Jesus when Adam and Eve sinned, God had uh, made a promise that um, a mediator, I can put it this way, would come to redeem humanity. So there is only, it, there, is, there, there is always has been one mediator from the beginning, <laughs> from Genesis. It's just that God, um, Allocated, no, um, it's like God. Um, no, uh, it came. It came by bits. It came by bits. We had the priesthood, and then as disciple, then we had Jesus in the flesh. But from the beginning, it has always been Jesus, and God put the plan of salvation in different ways to the people so that they may have an understanding. The covenant has never changed, really. There is only one covenant. But because God, I, I'm going to use that word, adapted himself to 
uh, sinful humanity. <laughs> yeah? So uh, that's the reason why we always talk about a, a new covenant and an old covenant, but really and truly, God has only one covenant with the earth. Amen. Just to, um, God has put it in perspective so yeah. we can understand. That's right. The covenant is about Christ. Mm. And um, the covenant is about our redemption and our restoration. As Mitch was saying, Genesis 3.15, the promise of the seed of a woman that will bruise the serpent's head. And that have to take place before Christ could ascend to mediate on our behalf. And so this was from the beginning since Adam sinned mm. that God has to plan before the foundation of the world that he will restore and redeem us. need of a new covenant. Why do we need a new covenant? If perhaps somebody can answer, why do we need a new covenant? what the lesson is saying to us. That's why the Bible says we have to read for ourselves and understand. Because when we read this quarterly sometimes, to be honest, I personally don't understand it sometimes. So you have already bring it out clearly, Michelle. The mm -hmm. covenant has been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And those who have the education who write this quarterly should bring it out clearly so people like me and others who don't understand can understand it. Yes. And that's why we need to go to the Bible as Seventh-day Adventists. Mm. We need to write things clearly that we, especially the older people, mm. who don't really understand the quarterly, they have no one to help them to read it and understand it. If they don't come to church, if they don't look on the Zoom or whatever, they don't know what is in the quarterly. Mm. So all we need to know, the covenant has been there from the foundation from of the world. The world. Mm. However, so, um, uh, even though she said that, I know in the past, that in the early days before Jesus came, um, we used to be having animals who had to be killed mm -hmm. to, when we were looking forward to Jesus coming. But when Jesus came, a new cov the new covenant was established. That's my understanding of it. And if anybody don't agree, mm -hmm. you can do it. But I think when Jesus came, the new covenant was established, and that was the perfect covenant. Because now we have a mediator between God and man who was able to give us all and plant the plan of salvation in our hearts where we only had to obey him rather than having to look forward to killings of goats and lambs or doves. So that was my understanding. Of it. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. So as, as it has been explained that the animal sacrifice was only pointing to the reality, the original Mm -hmm. And therefore, that was a lesson to give to the Israelites of the coming Messiah that would come, that would pay the price for our sin. That was a shadow. That was a yeah, shadow. That yes. was a shadow. And may I add that uh, what God wants is that we attain perfection. Yeah, at the end of it, God wants us to attain perfection. Now, the animals couldn't bring perfection. They couldn't. A priest, a priest unlike uh, 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 Jesus, who was God, a priest dies. Then he has to be replaced. It's never the same priest. So you have the animals that are not perfect. Then you have the priest who die, yeah, and needs to be replaced. And then you also have the, um, a priest was a human being, sinful like ourselves, yeah? So it's three things already. So it couldn't, they couldn't do what Jesus would do, who lives eternally, who is perfect, and, 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 and doesn't need to be replaced. 
Amen. Amen. I've seen your hand. Um, Elder Leslie, I've seen oh, your hand. Oh, sorry. And I, I, so I, I add, talk. it was not, sorry, sorry. And it was not him. A priest was not him. Jesus is him. So that's very important. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. You can come to the mic. Come to the mic. No, Ella Leslie first, please. Thank you. Just want to, I would just like to read from the book of Revelation, uh, Galatians chapter 4, from verse 22, and it says, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one of a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which are things, which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, not mm -hmm. one covenant, there are two covenants, mm -hmm. the one from Mount Sinai, which garneth to the bondage, which is Agar. We cannot argue. Paul is making it clear that there are two covenants, one of bondage and one of promise. This new covenant is the covenant of promise. So they are not one covenant, but two. Paul is making that argument. Okay. This covenant that we are engaging under Christ, if there was only one covenant, they could not have been talking about a new covenant. The covenant of Christ, the, the covenant that Christ the new covenant that Christ is the mediator of is the important covenant, is the covenant of promise. Okay. Um, God, can I just say something before you speak? It is God who initiate the covenant relationship. God mm -hmm. did not give us a covenant of bondage. The people say all that the Lord say, we will do. They did not keep their side of the covenant. And so, therefore, God's purpose was to write the, the law into their heart and their mind. But mm -hmm. they did not see Jesus through the sacrificial system that they were Jesus. using that was pointing to Christ. And therefore, that become a bondage because they did not follow and see and behold Christ as Moses behold him upon Mount Sinai when his face was shined. And he have to veil him because the veil his face because the people could not look upon his face. Because Moses behold Christ in his word. And this is what Christ, this is what Jesus wants us to do, is to behold Christ. So God initiated the covenant. The covenant was not of bondage. The no. people didn't follow the covenant. Yeah, yeah. Old and the new covenant. The problem I have here is with the mediator. Is it possible for us to explain this clearly so that we will know where we stand with the mediator? Okay. Let's go to the... Um, All right, uh, we're talking about the covenant and the mediator. Uh, it was raised that... Um, Christ had to stand in for us because when the covenant was given, although often as human beings we say we can do something, do we understand it first of all? Do we allow ourselves to be taught through? Often no, we just automatically agree that we can do this, we are going to do that. Now what I understand from the word of God, I will show you, it's up to you to allow me, but this is my way. And that's what the Israelites have been following. And even now the Lord is speaking to you. I have put the covenant there. This is what I want you to follow. Mm -hmm. This will lead you to, to, uh, to heaven, they say. Mm -hmm. But then you have to make sure you take heed what the Lord says. It's not something just you agree to. So when we're talking about the covenant and the agreement, let's remember it's something we cannot do ourselves. We need to be guided and led. And that is what this is all about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. So the mediator of the new covenant, which is Christ, the reason why he's the, he's the better um, mediator, mediator yeah. is because, number one, he's able to save us. There's no other name given among men where we can be saved, but in the name of Jesus Christ. 
So Christ's mediation is a saving mediation. Um, uh, our next thing is, he's morally perfect. Christ didn't have no sin. He didn't have to make any sacrifice like the Levitical priests. So Christ is morally perfect. That makes him uh, a better mediator. And also, he's holy, he's blameless, he's God. He's in the very presence of God uh, mediating for us. That's what makes his mediation a better um, uh, mediator. Okay, Sister Ruth. Okay. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath. It's nice to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Now, before I say anything, I read from uh, the book of Hebrews, and that is uh, chapter 13, verse 20, and it reads, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, that is Hebrews 13, verse 20. It reads, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the, that great shepherd of the sheep, that the blood of the everlasting covenant. And it remains to be there. Now, I read down what I've written here from the book of Hebrews as well. And we say that that covenant is our eternal covenant, the blood of Jesus. And here... The entire Bible is the progressive unfolding of the everlasting covenant. And the old covenant in the book of the Lord of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, pointed to Jesus. And Jesus himself, as our brother was asking, is our mediator in the new covenant. And when he died, he died for our sins, and he became a new medi mediator. Rather than the sacrifices that were being given before, those sacrifices were dealt with and finished with. And because he came and died for us, he died for everything, and they polished the sacrifices of animals. There was no blood. You can imagine, you have a family of 10 people. How many animals are you going to sacrifice? Thousands. So he only came and died for us all, all of us under one umbrella. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Ruth. So we say Jesus' uh, mediation is better because his merited blood cleanses us and justifies us. His sacrifice pay for our redemption. It justifies us and gives us access to the throne of grace. This is why his mediation is better. Yeah. Uh, may I add... Um, that what is causing the problem is sin, isn't it? Sin. Now, we are, as, as I think it's uh, Solomon who said that we are unable to actually, we are unable to fulfill the law. And the law is perfect. The law is God's constitution for the universe. Now, can a law, even we have the law of the land, can a law change the heart? That's right. it, the law cannot change the heart. The law cannot make us perfect. Therefore, we need Christ to help us fulfill the law. Because even the children of Israel, even though, as Brother Paul was saying, that they promised to do everything. Even they heard the God, the voice of God, and it was terrifying. We said, you know what? Let's say that we are going to follow everything. But then they realized that in the course of history, it was back and forth, and they never managed to really follow the law. The law could not make them perfect. The law could only point out to what is wrong, what is wrong, wrong and right, but it couldn't make anyone perfect. And many a times they failed. And they had nobody to show them really how to uh, follow that law perfectly. And that's why Christ came in to show how to be the perfect model, how to follow the law. Praise the Lord. Christ is the supreme ruler. You need a supreme being. 
yeah. um, to, to enable you to, to, to live out the will of God. Uh, you can do nothing of your own, but with Christ, who strengthens you, you can do all things. And this is what the lesson is all pointing to. We see from the beginning of time, when Cain failed to behold the lamb, he killed Abel. We see when Christ and Christ's platform, when the disciples failed to behold Christ, they put him on a cross. Even though they claim that they keep the law, yet murder was in their heart. You cannot keep the law without Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the one who will give you the grace and the power to enable to do his will. You of yourself can't do anything. Do and this is why Christ is the um, perfect, is the, is the perfect um, sacrifice, is the perfect uh, mediator, is the one who stands in the very presence of God in intercession for us. And so to just make the clarification between law and grace. Grace um, comes through Jesus Christ that cleanses us and forgives us of our sin so that we may no longer do the things that we used to do. He come to save us from sin. Sin is the transgression of the law that we may walk in perfect obedience through his strength. This is what it's all about. Christ give us the victory and the strength through his shed blood through the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in his will. I see your hand here, um, Elder Wesley. And then we're going to move to the new and the new. That's a point. Um, a, a mediator is someone who can understand both sides of both, both parties that are involved. So Jesus was God, mm -hmm. and therefore he understands the position from, from the position of God, and we are men. Jesus, when he came, it says in Philippians chapter 2, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, Christ also was highly exalted and was given a name that is above every other name. Christ's perfect position as mediator is between God and man is not hinged necessarily on the fact that he was God, but on the fact that as a man, he was completely obedient to God in its entirety. So that's why Jesus can understand at every point he was tempted like as we are. Jesus can understand our position. And on the other hand, being God, he can understand the position of God. So Jesus is the perfect mediator for us because as a man, he knows exactly what we are going through. He went through the same thing and was perfectly obedient. And therefore, he can understand our, our, our situation. Jesus and no one else is our perfect mediator. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yes, Christ used his, his one hand to hold on to divinity and one hand to hold on to humanity and bridge, bridge the gulf that sinners separate between heaven and earth and join us together with one with the Father. Elder Keith, I've seen your hand. Just, um, just a, um, a point here. The, the mediation of Christ... Um, and the, the, the death of Christ, they are not mutually exclusive. Why? Because man's, man's salvation had to be secured. The death penalty for sin had to be made. And when Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for sin, when, um, when man accepts um, the, 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 um, the fact that Jesus Christ has died for them, um, then the mediation of Christ comes into play. Because you can just imagine with my mind's eye, Jesus stands up and he says, yes, Keith sinned. Keith committed um, an abundance of sin, but um, my grace. So, Hence the reason why I said they are not mutually exclusive. Um, they, you know, they fall hand in hand. Jesus had to die first. He had to secure the salvation of man. He had to pay the price for sin. And having done that, 
he can stand up and he can say to the Father, my blood. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. So his death justifies us when we come by faith, and his mediation is for our sanctification as we send our sin before the throne of grace. So we can be cleansed and empowered by his spirit. So if you give me this. So his life is death. His life is death. His resurrection, his mediation is the is his um, guarantee of our salvation. This is the covenant blessing. Through whom we receive repentance, forgiveness, that where he is, we may be also. So this is about redeeming, restoring, and to save us finally. Do you have anything to say, my young man? Uh, no, I think it has always been. So, <laughs> so the new change. covenant has better promises mm -hmm. to deliver us from sin, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to whom we receive redemption, and to write his law in our hearts. In the, 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 the new covenant, um, the laws of the new covenant is internal, internalized. It's written in our hearts. Amen. It's written in our hearts. And um, because our Christ died on the cross instead of, and rose again instead of us dying without hope, he, he, Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, for the law of the spirit in, in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So we're not under the condemnation of death. We are free because Christ, Christ our mediator, died in our stead. Yeah. And he is our high priest forever. He is forever our high priest. He intercedes for us. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Stuart. <laughs> I just think that this passage is very important for us to hear as well. Um, it's Jeremiah 31. I was reading that. 31 and 34, but I'll just read verse 31 and verse 34. It's the behold the day come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I have made with the Father in the days that I took them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But this... Sorry, I'm reading a bit more. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel... After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inwards part and write it in their heart and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man and their neighbor and every man with their brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Amen. I'm just going to say something. Thank you, Sister Carlin. Yes, it is true that Christ wants to write his law in our heart, but how does he do this? Um, the heart cannot renew unless it's open to divine calling. The open of the heart through repentance and confession. Christ must be whole and be accepted as Savior, who is the source of our strength. The door of our heart must be opened through repentance and confession for the law of love to be written in our hearts. That's the way Christ will write his law in our heart. When we knock and we open, then he comes in. So we're not just going to read the word without understanding the word. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, <clears throat> I think that even before, uh, when the law was given to the children of Israel, they were to understand it. You know, 
they were to understand what the law meant. And even though, um, even though they broke it, they still had the duty to understand and to accomplish and, and to uh, follow the law. They still, it has not changed. The requirements have never changed. To know the law, to write it in their heart, the Lord in the book of Deuteronomy, if I remember, God said, um, um, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. And he also told them to write the law on the, on, on the front of their um, front forehead leg. and also in their heart and on their hands, if I remember. So th the requirements have always <coughs> been the same. God has only got one law to follow. And from the Old Testament and the New Testament, we are required to follow that law. It has not changed. But now we have Jesus, Jesus who is the embodiment of the perfect uh, accomplishment of the law. He is the one, as Brother Thomas was saying, he's been obedient to the law as a man and he could also understand why we sometimes fall because he was tempted like ourselves, but he never yielded to temptation. Actually, the, the, the quarterly is saying to us that Jesus is the guarantor who took upon himself all the legal obligations of the covenant that had been broken. Jesus' exaltation in heaven guarantees that God's promises to human beings will be fulfilled. By resurrecting, because yes, he was obedient, but he also died. And you can't have one without the other. So we have to talk about the resurrection. Yeah, he died and he resurrected. So by resurrecting Jesus and seating him at the right hand, the Father has shown that he will resurrect us and bring us to him. Jesus is the greater mediator than Moses because he ministers in the heavenly sanctuary and has offered himself as a perfect sacrifice for us. And I think that this point is very important in the discussion about the new covenant. Amen. Thank you, Sister Nish. Good morning, Sabbath School. I just want to read something from our quarterly, and that is taken on the Thursday from Jeremiah, if you permit me. It says, this promise did not simply secure access to the knowledge of the law by anyone. It also, and more importantly, was to bring about the change in the heart of the nation. The problem of Israel was that their sin was engraved with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond on the tablet of their heart. They had a stubborn heart. Therefore, it was impossible for them to do the right thing. Jeremiah did not announce a change of the law because the problem of Israel was not the law, but the heart. God wanted Israel's faithfulness to be the grateful response to what he had done for them. Thus, he gave them the Ten Commandments to them with the historical prolong, expressing his love and care for them. God wanted Israel to obey his law as on a great deliverance, acknowledge that he wanted the best for them. So David in Psalms 51 state, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said he did not sacrifice. He does not want to sacrifice. Carlin, I can't read your Bible. It's too fine. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. 
when we realize Israel was sin and they come back to God and they're going again and they come back and they all over the place. It's just like us today. We are not stable. We are not obedient. We are all disobedient to God. So we need to come back to him individually and collectively. And that is what um, the law is saying to us today. It's in our heart. So when we sing, don't ring the bell, I'm talking. So, so when, when we come to Christ and we realize that we are broken, we need God to mend the heart that's within us. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. How many minutes do we have? Okay, just let me um uh, looking unto Jesus, the, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who is enabled to to enable us to walk per, in perfect obedience through the indwelling of His Holy Spirit. I hope you have a blessed. I hope you have been blessed by our panel discussion. Remember, Jesus had paid all, and he is now our high priest, our advocate. And if, if, if you have not said yes to Jesus, now is the time. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart, while mercy gate still open. So, have a blessed Sabbath. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.